Hello, and welcome to the Writing Guys podcast, where we help writers get inside a guy's head by answering burning questions on how men think. I'm Lansing McCall, today's moderator, and our hosts are Michael Aspen and C.T. Andrews. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right before we started recording, Michael said something about having the giggles, and then I'm like, oh, Lord, now I'm going to have the giggles. <laughs> <laughs> And that dovetails right, nicely with our topic of manliness. Yeah. <laughs> you men <Yeah>. giggle. <laughs> oh, all right. So for you writers today, here's today's question. Um, what does it mean to be a man's man? Mm. Mm. What does it mean to be a man's man? Well, you got to be tall and you have to have muscles and you have to have good hair. Sarcasm? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Total. Oh, that's good. I tell you, there's a lot of cliches around that. Um, you have to be into sports, have to be into cars, have to be into mowing your lawn and whatever. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, there's lots of ways to be really good, to, to be a good friend to other men without, um, uh, without having to be involved with all that, although it doesn't hurt. Um, but I will say that sharing interests is huge. Um, there's something about the way the, the male brain works and, and maybe this is the way the female brain works too. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a woman, but. Um, there's something about the way the, the male brain works where when you can relate on a topic that's not, it's hard, it's hard to define. If you can relate on a topic like something that is safe and also something that you can do, right? Like uh, if you're both into cars and you're both working on a car that is a way to be a man's man you're 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 going to be able to connect on a, in a safe atmosphere where you're able to have that those conversations and you can work on stuff together and you can build something together those are huge bonding moments between guys um that you wouldn't necessarily get and you need that right uh you wouldn't necessarily get that if you're just talking about like relationships you know you're not going to sit there and you're not going to sit there and have a conversation about how you're troubled with your marriage but while you're working on your car, you might mention how things aren't that good, right? And you'd be able to you'd be able to address it together. So yeah, that's yeah. When you're talking about a man's man, you're talking about specifically what a man would want in a man. Yeah, not in a romantic sense, obviously. Right. In, the, in the in the C.S. Lewis sense, that friendship. Uh, what would see what did C.S. Lewis say? He said that any anyone who believes that there's nothing essential about friendship, but rather an expression of eros, which is sexual fantasy, has never had a friend. Yeah. Uh, in other words, friendships can be very bonding in that way. And when men share something like that, I think they look at each other as a man's man. I I personally think that. Um, the answer to this question, what does a man look for in another man, is going to be very, very similar to what a woman looks for in a man, um, in a man that she's interested in, in wanting to be with in a romantic sense. Like any guy that has influence in his immediate sphere, he's got an, a sphere of influence, is going to, that's a good way to start becoming a man's man. Like it, when he's got experience, he's got knowledge. He knows how to express that experience and knowledge in any given sphere in mm. which he it, it belongs. That's a good way to start be, to become a man's man, I think. Um, but it's a, that's a good way to start. Another interesting thing, I don't want to skip topics too fast if we want to revisit these or not, but a man's man has to be able to say no to a woman which is kind of interesting. I think the big, the big misnomer is that men who have a lot of women are respected by other men. And I don't think that's entirely true. 
Right. A man who can say no, let's say to pussy, he can say no to a woman. Yeah. I think men respect that. They're like, damn, he told her no. He's, you know, this guy that shows a certain masculine confidence that he has in himself that he can say no to a woman. Us guys, we have to get it while it's good. We're not the we're not the key holders to sex or we're not the gatekeepers to sex. You know, the gatekeepers. We are the key holders, but we're not the (laughs) gate. We're not the ones that say yay or nay. We're the ones that say, okay, thank you. You know, and so any man that's going to be able to say no to that, I think is going to be respected by other men. Uh, Every bit as much as the guy that can't say no and, you know, goes off and gets a high when you were talking, when you said that um, that you thought what men look for and looked up to maybe in other men was the same thing you thought women looked up to, immediately I thought of the word stability. And I, you think that's a good quality for a man's man, stability? 100%, I do. Well, um, uh, I, I got a slightly different answer. Consistency. Mm. Consistency and stability are not necessarily the same thing. If you are a guy that likes to go out and get drunk and you need a friend to go get drunk with you and you like to go do something silly and stupid over the weekend and you consistently like to do that and you got a friend who consistently likes to do that, you can have a very close relationship with that friend. But that's not necessarily a stable person, right? So um, I I think consistency is a much more important factor there. No, that's a good point. Um, I think that one's ability to control their emotions however suggests stability like he's yeah. stable on an emotional level like yeah. uh, your buddy from the last episode that <laughs> went off and, and, and flipped his shit because one yeah. little thing happened that's not very stable no maybe that could you could also say that wasn't very consistent of him either because maybe oh. you'd never seen him behave that way i don't know <laughs> well, no i had i just hadn't seen it to that level that was uh no, that had well, that's that had the crossed other thing. the line yeah I, there's that's a stability the issue there you know yeah definitely definitely i mean the other thing is if they're consistent if it's consistently bad behavior that's you know yeah but i like some, that you distinguish between the two you know yeah, the the thing is though shared interests and consistency are two pretty important pieces there if your interests are in unstable activities and you've got a friend who's consistently interested in those same unstable activities you can build a very strong relationship there but just like there are different classes of of people in both male and female you're going to run into sleazy hounds that'll go after every piece of skirt out there. You're going to go after people that like to build up their neighborhoods and like, and like work on stuff and make stuff. You're going to run into guys that love to go to sporting events. You just, it's not always going to be um, somebody who's a productive, stable member of society. That's going to draw people to them. They're going to draw people that want that in their life to them. Right. So um I have I have friends that I reconnected with now that I wasn't very close with because for a, for a long time because the, our interests have now aligned right we all have kids now and and we all are trying to be family men and before they were very much into the drinking scene when I was not and and going out and hitting on women I was married I'm like I can't go do all that stuff with you I would like to do that with you but I can't and. And more importantly, I, I mean, I would like to do it, but I also don't want to do that. I don't want to be putting my marriage in trouble. So we were not close at that point, but only because our interests didn't align. But they were very consistent, man, every weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. Are those interests that align or are they more like life positions? Yeah, good like point. we have the kids and have a career and all that so, stuff. I think I think that commonality will exist between them. But I will say, even when it comes to shared interests, I think that's essential in two men bonding and becoming friends and yeah. buddies and partners. But if the question is, what does it take to be a man's man? I don't think that, you know, 14-year-old quote-unquote nerds who spend their time together in the 
basement playing Dungeons and Dragons, Th though they do look at each other like best friends, I don't think they go, we're men. We are men in so much as a man's man would be. But they'll probably go watch Indiana Jones, you know, and go, ah, oh, that's a man. You know, that's 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 a man because he's he's physical. He's influential. He <laughs> he's influential in very unique ways. You know, he climbs under Nazi armed trucks and influences car chases in that way. But you, you know what I mean? Like, like mm. that's their idea of a man's man. And because he's I think, to be I a think man. you're I think you're projecting your idea of a man's man onto other people because they probably would look at some uh, character from Japanese animation and say that's a man's man, right? Because that's the influences that are more prominent in their life. Well, I'm only um, making an example. I'm not necessarily projecting my idea. I'm just making an example. If the example is anime, that's fine. Yeah. But that anime character, I'm pretty sure, is big and strong and influential and wields magic and what what if what if your what if your man's man character is cowboy bebop or or uh is somebody like in my case growing up the one that i really thought was an amazing character was sherlock holmes right when i i wouldn't when i went to watch indiana jones in the movie theater i'm like what a fucking moron dude you do not want to climb on a tank while it's moving that is stupid. You do not want to get into a fist fight with an airplane swinging around. It's going to kill you. Yeah. But but Sherlock Holmes being able to deduce and use logic and have an impeccable set of parameters to to solve mysteries was very fucking appealing to me. Right? So yeah. it's I think I think the I think it boils down to uh I think what you're talking about is like a core set of values that you value right? You are attracted to people that have a core set of values that you agree with. And there are certain values that will draw other guys to you. Um, being respectful, uh, not, not being petty, right? Um, be, being able to stand up to bullies, even if it's a small, and you don't have to be physical necessarily, but just to be able to go, hey, oh, hey, no, right? Let's not have that. We're not going to go that direction today. That kind of thing can really draw people to you. Yeah, and it's it's a set of values that stabilizes the people around you. Yeah, I I, I would say that Sherlock Holmes shares the same set core values as Indiana Jones. Um, <laughs> he was he was a boxer and a scrapper. Hey, he yeah. uh, he was a very intellectually uh, capable guy. Yep. He 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 had influence in his little sphere. His little you know, sphere. He had people that respected him, people that depended on him, turned to him. He had, didn't the women love him? Not quite like James Bond, but he had his fair share of uh, female. I think there uh, were a few, but very few because he showed no interest in that. He was more interested in the intellectual pursuit and the few women that he really cared sure. about were intellectual equals to him. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I would, I would say that he kind of shares the same core values. Um, he actually has one over Indiana Jones in that he had a primary supervillain that he yeah. uh, tended to go toe to toe with. And he, he, he loved the challenge of that. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'd say, I'd say Sherlock Holmes is a man's man. I want to talk about uh, respect. This is something that's come up a couple of times. Uh, mm -hmm. In my thirties, I hung out with a group of people that was a mix of men and women and, and couples and stuff. And we just went and did stuff. We were, it was a big volleyball crowd. We all went and played volleyball everywhere. And there was this one couple that was fairly new to our group, um, but had joined it. And one day it came out that, and they were married, and it came out that he had hit her. Like he abused, he abused her. And boy, they the whole group just dropped him like a hot potato. And I think the respect is a big thing, right? On being a man's man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For the yeah. second time in this episode, I want to say 100%. Yes, respect. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a respect. Well, and, respect and respectability. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, you, to be respectable <laughs> requires a certain moral core that is very difficult to, I'm not going to say difficult. 
um, it is it is not something that is that is um, easy to obtain if you're not naturally gifted in that, right? It's something that, because there are temptations that are so difficult to avoid. Um, making the snide joke at somebody's expense, that can lose a lot of people's respect for you. Um, you know, taking the sucker punch whenever you can, or doing a practical joke that's in bad taste or mean, that can that can do it. There's just lots of ways where you can slip and slide down that slippery slope. It's a very sharp knife edge to be respectable. Um, but there are people that do it and they are, they are beacons to all, I think in, in a really neat way. I do. I do want to say just in relation to that story that I was really surprised. Women tend to surround other women and hold them up in a situation like that. They will, you know, it'd be like a flock of moms coming in to help. Right. In that particular situation, the men in the group also surrounded this woman with safety and held her up and helped her with whatever she needed. I was super proud of my friends for their response. Mm. Anyway, I just wanted to say that now moving on back to respect. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that respect gets a bad rap uh, or if not a bad rap, then certainly a misunderstood rap. I think it's very easy to say that men are most respectable when they're, you know, when they have great presence and they have uh they walk into a room and they sort of have this sort of charismatic you know approach about them and i think that's all true but what gets overlooked is are those smaller things and they're, and they're not smaller things in terms of meaningfulness but smaller things in terms of scope like the man who will see a a, a child that's lost in the mall and kind of standing off to the side, trying to avoid everybody, and will actually approach that child and say, are you lost? Do you need help? Can I help you find your parents? That's respectable. I think men look at that man and go, that's cool. That's awesome. Look what he did. Or a man who will, you know, see a woman being abused across the parking lot and go, hey, buddy, what's up? You know, what gives? You, know, you can't treat a woman that way or, or whatever. Those are the kinds of things I think are also sort of apply to a, a, a man being a man's man, sort of speak. Standing so up speak. for, you know, standing up against injustice. Yeah, or you almost said, I think you almost said standing up for those weaker than you, right? That's what I uh, thought you were. That was me misspeaking the first line I was going to say, but then I thought of that as I was saying the line. Yeah, standing up for those who are weaker is also there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those think... unwilling or unable to defend themselves. It's not necessarily mm. weak. Sometimes they just don't know how, or they don't. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't walk all over a man's man either. You know, they're the ones that, uh, mm. the other day. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you just hit a really good point. I want to add to it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Yeah. Your talk. Yeah. Uh, the other, the other a couple of weeks ago, Lancey mentioned or somebody mentioned uh goodwill hunting and the the scene where uh ben affleck's character told his best friend and brother i don't ever want to see you again if it means you getting out of this place and being the best you can be oh that one yeah. that one <laughs> it was, yeah. he, michael mentioned that you're right yeah. michael yeah. to you it's that one. Oh, it's that one. <laughs> you know yeah, it's <laughs> The one with the beard, the big beard. <laughs> I'm uh, so sorry. I didn't mean to distract That's you. right. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, that yeah. was a beautiful it's, scene. It's that sheer sense of hard-nosed honesty and a fearlessness to face it and to express it, especially to others. Man's man. You know, you can't – That's that guy is hard to take advantage of. You're not going to be able to change him or walk all over him or, you know, that's a man's I man. Think I think also, so I, I think a term that might describe what I'm getting ready to talk about is self-confidence, but for some reason, it just doesn't feel like the appropriate term, but what I would call it is knowing and owning who you are, right? Um, there is, there is so much where you're asked to be something you're not in, in this world. And, and that's not a, that's not a guy thing. That's just people, right? You're asked to be something you're not and being able to stand up and say, I am not that person or I am this person 
And I am willing to stand up and, and say that and draw boundaries in my life to make sure that I continue to be that person. That's huge. Um, but that honesty thing really brought that home, right? If you, if you know that you've got a friend that is being uh, inappropriate in some way, uh, insert whatever you want into that. And you have the guts to be able to pull them aside and have that conversation face to face with them where you say, you know, I'm worried. It looks like this is happening. You know, you really, you really shouldn't do that. Um, that is a, that is a powerful moment between friends that, uh, you wouldn't necessarily get from somebody, even if somebody else said it, that isn't close to you, it's not going to have the same impact. Right. So being able to stand up for your core self, the part of you that's inside your heart and be able to, to hold on to that and protect that and guard that. And at the same time, be able to, uh, invoke in others change where they may be going off the rails. That's a, that's a big thing. That's yeah. a big thing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about ethics. Yeah. Yeah. It's a code of ethics. If a man a, lives there you go. That's a good one. Yeah. I remember there was a, there was a television show, fantastic show, at least in the early years. And then I, I felt like I lost touch with it as it moved on. It was called the wonder years. And oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the main characters on the show, not the main character, not Fred Savage's character, but like his friend, if I remember correctly, if I'm remembering this correctly, he went off to Vietnam and he came back and he was really struggling to adapt to civilian life, which a lot of GIs do. Um, he came home and his the the person he was before he went away doesn't fit anymore. He's not that guy. But yet that's what everybody expected, right? Everybody expected him to come home and just return to being the person he was before. And of course he couldn't be in the military anymore because he just, he didn't want to be that person anymore. So he was caught in this quagmire of he can't be who everybody else wants him to be. And he can't be who uh, the military needs him to be. And he's, he's a man without an identity. And um, there's a scene in the show where he's like sitting on a park bench and he's like, it's just in his underwear and his clothes are on the ground. And uh, the Fred Savage character character comes up and sits next to him and he says, you know, what's going on? And he says, my clothes just don't fit anymore. And it wasn't that they didn't fit like physically. It was that he just, he could not be that person anymore. And Fred Savage's character was like, it's okay, man, we'll figure it out together. That understanding that and being able to do that without putting imprinting your own requirements on that is huge. That is so fucking huge. Because there's so many times where you are struggling with the demands that society places on you or your family places on you or your wife places on you or your church places on you or whatever. And you are trying to live up to that. And it is hard. And somebody that can sit down with you, it's okay, man, we'll figure it out together, right? That is That is being a guy that other guys will respond to and respect a lot right yeah so yeah would you say that being a man's man means being someone you can count on someone that will be there for another oh, yeah. meeting oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah i'll, uh, I'll okay. steal a line from ct 100 percent. 100 percent. yeah for sure but you need to say it like a texan though 100 100 100 percent sorry I'll go put some marbles in my mouth. I'm sorry. That was mean. I shouldn't. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Hundred, hundred percent. There you go. Um. Yeah. The what? What? It, how do I put this into words? What Michael's talking about is not something that happens naturally. I think our ethics and our beliefs happen naturally. They are an expression of who we are. But if you want to follow and stay true to those ethics. I think another part of being a man's man is being able to make the decision. You have to decide to yeah. do that. When when someone tells you to do something and you don't want to do it or you don't feel like it's an, your ethical place to do it, it's hard. And the decision is there that you have to make. You have to make the decide. You, you have to decide to tell them no. You, it's a decision. It's a conscious thing. It's like taking the example uh, of Fred Savage going up to his friend and in the, in the, in the show, if I recall correctly, it wasn't his friend, it was his older sister's boyfriend. 
Oh, maybe I, that's who it was. Or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Fred Savage, in a real world scenario, he had to decide to go up to that bench because when you stand there and you're a kid and you see someone damaged sitting on a bench, it's much easier just to walk away. It's much easier to just walk away. But he made the decision to go do that. So being a man's man is not something that just organically happens. It's yeah. something that these men decide they're going to do in everyday yeah. life. And it takes courage. Um, I I think that one of the examples you gave earlier about a kid being hurt, like you see a kid alone at a mall or you see a kid hurt at a mall or something and they appear to be by themselves. Believe it or not, it takes courage to go up to that kid. Uh, mm -hmm. As a guy, it takes a lot of courage because there's a lot of ways to misinterpret some guy that nobody knows walking up to some kid that is obviously not his and then walking away with him, right? Is he trying to abduct that kid? Is he trying to just take that kid into a back room and do something nefarious? Is he trying to help that kid find his parents? What is he doing? Right. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a lot of times where man, you just said it, it is just so much easier to be like, I didn't see it. I'm walking away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that way, but it, it takes a real strength of character and a courage to sometimes stand up and do what you need to do to be that guy. And the ones that have that courage are definitely man's man's yeah. man, or, you know, guys, guys that you're, yeah. you're just like, Jesus Christ, that took a lot of courage. And it looks like such a simple thing sometimes because, because yeah. the way, the way, way society reacts to a woman helping a kid that's hurt is not how society reacts to a men, men doing that. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. one of those things. I, so. I think, I think that when a man's, a man's man. We're talking about that, right? Yeah, when, right when a yeah. man's man approaches a woman he's never met or says no to his boss at work or approaches that lonely kid in the mall, the reason he's able to make the decision to do that is because he trusts his own objectives. He doesn't wonder why he's going up to that person. He doesn't wonder why he's making it. He trusts his own objectives, which means he's got a clear mind. He's clear mindedly under his perspective on the world is very clear in his mind and he yeah. knows why he's here and what his objectives are. So he's, um, he's not, you know, he, he, it helps him make that decision to do that. Uh, have guys. Either, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Have, have you guys ever read uh, the kite runner? That movie? Oh that my movie? gosh. So good. No, so I haven't read it, but I've got it sitting right where is it? It's right here <laughs> somewhere. Oh, that's it, right, that's it right there. Yeah. If you would like a really nice juxtaposition between somebody who has a natural born or a, an innate courage and manliness and somebody who doesn't, read that book. Um, I, it's, it's the difference between the father and the son. The son is the narrator. He's the one telling the story. So from his perspective, and he feels so weak and powerless compared to his father who has this just natural ability to stand up for what is right and do what is right. And he, he admires his father so much and yet he cannot live up to who his father is. And, and that's a, a one of the themes in that book It is a fantastic uh, book. Highly recommend it. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I, I have started reading that book twice and stopped out of fear that I won't like it because from what I understand the story is about, it's gotta be one of the greatest stories ever told. Good story but I need to sit down and actually read the whole book. I mean, it's yeah. So you bring that up and it's kind of funny. It's like that one book that's in my closet and the, the, the back of the mind closet going when the time is right, you know, uh, when yeah. you're in the mood, come, come read me when you're, when you think you're man enough and you're ready, <laughs> open me up and read me. Yeah. That's, that's the one book. It's uh, um from a, from the perspective of, a male dominated culture too, because this was, uh, is it Afghanistan? I think it's it was Afghanistan, Afghanistan, I think, or something. Yeah. yeah. So where it was after Sharia law got implemented or during that period when it does, which is definitely a, a male oriented society. Right. And, um, and the, his follow-up book, a uh, thousand tiny sons or something like that. I don't remember the title exactly Splendid. deals with that even, huh? A thousand what? Splendid Sons. There you go. That's it. 
um, that deals with the whole gender issues within that society and a much deeper level. And it's, it's a very different book, but it's definitely very good. Um, and it really highlights the way women are mistreated in that society. Um, anyway, back to the point, but coming, coming from that background and, and so on really gives an impression of how difficult it is for him to have stood up for some of the things he stood up for because yeah. the entire society was pushing in a different direction. And this is men pushing it. And he's standing up like a rock in the tide saying no. And uh, it's difficult to do. <laughs> yeah. Many kudos well, to that father. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at history, I mean, if you look at history at all of the, the male uh, historical figures that you respect the most, it's men who did that. They bucked the tide. They stood against the, they stood as a, like a wall, you know, um, I go to the William Wallace types, you know, who who said, no, this is wrong. And I'm going to give my life in the effort of changing it. You know, those are men's men. How could they not be, you know, yeah. um, charged? To be fair, there are there are women who have done that in the past as well. Um, Catherine the Great and a few others, but um, and more than a few. Uh, but but we're but on that topic, yeah, the men that are willing to do that earn a garner a tremendous amount of respect from their yeah fellow men. So when you guys were talking earlier about the the man making a decision to stop and help someone you know making a conscious decision it reminded me of a little story and it's very small and it's not it's topic adjacent but from my husband who is out and about in the world every day going to different client sites and things like that and he was telling me one day at lunch he had this really cute waitress she was like a teenager and just and he meant cute like what a sweet girl mm. cute not like yeah physically cute and he said, he made the comment offhand, he said, you know, I always try to be very aware when I'm dealing with young ladies, you know, and I try to be in the father mindset yeah, because I don't want them to think I'm creepy. I don't want them to feel threatened or anything like that. And it, to me, it kind of slotted right in with a lot of the other things you're saying here, that self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, he then added, if they're over 20, all bets are off. I'm going to flirt like crazy. <laughs> you know, That's like, a man's man right there. Yeah. Man. I tell you, but I, I tell feel you, like that self-awareness thing kind of fit the yeah. discussion of what we're seeing. Yeah, for so sure. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you an interesting story from my childhood where a man's man uh, did something for me. Um, I was no older than seven, <clears throat> probably significantly younger than that, five, six, somewhere in there. And my younger brother was about a year and a half, almost two years younger than I am. We were out riding our big wheels. I had a green machine and my brother had a big wheel. We were out riding that in our neighborhood as kids will want to do. And uh, we lived on a, the, where we, where we were told to put them when we were done is in the backyard. Well, to get to the backyard from the street we were on, we had to go up what to me was a huge hill, which now was probably just a step. <laughs> but at the time it was like this giant hill. And so, uh, my brother, uh, so he said, okay, I'll help you push yours up. I say that to him. And then you help me push mine up. He goes, okay. So I help him push his up and he just, just runs off, leaves me stranded. And I'm not strong enough to push my green machine up this hill. And I am beside myself frustrated being a six-year-old or whatever. You don't have the mental ability to like go in and ask for help. You just sit there and be like, I won't say my brother's name, but brother, brother, you left, you left me, right? What are you doing? You know, just being mad and, and lashing out at the injustice of it. And uh, a guy that lived down the street, a friend of mine, his older brother was significantly older, like almost or in the double digits, like 10, way bigger than me. He just walks over and he goes, he says, it's all right, bud. And he grabs the handlebars, well, not the handlebars, but the front wheel, because the green machine, the handles are on the side, right? You couldn't grab handlebars. So he grabbed like the front wheel and he just, Boom. he just tosses it up on the hill he goes there you go and that was that moment where he he took a minute out of his life a minute and i 45 years later 44 years later that moment sticks in my head and it will never leave that lives rent-free in my head for the rest of my life this guy 
help somebody that he didn't know very well, probably didn't like. I was not being a likable person. I was whining and crying and pissed off and frustrated. And, but he took a moment and helped me out. That is what a, that's what a man's man does, right? He brings everybody up. I love that story. <laughs> that was a great story. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's, those are the impressions that that makes. Yeah. You know? I saw a really good, um, a similar story. It was like a TikTok reel or something. And, you know, uh, no, no, it was a, a news story. It was a news story. And they were interviewing this mom and she said, you know, you always hope that your children are being kind in the world, but you never know because you're not around them. You only see what you see when you're around them. Well, what had happened was there was a mom, a di different mom who took her, her young son who has autism um, to the, the skate park and she, they would go when there weren't a lot of kids around so that he could skate and not, you know, bother or be bothered by other kids. And this, the first mom's, teenage boy comes up with a pack of other teenage boys and they're going to go skate and they just start talking to this kid and I guess he like fell over or his skateboard went the wrong way and he just comes over and helps him and then they're all hanging out and high-fiving him and just having a really good time and of course now the mom's like yay you know? <laughs> thank goodness my kid was right <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's another, you know, junior, junior member of the man's man club, right? Yeah. 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 I suppose I've got a story too, and then we'll wrap it up if you guys want to, but I've yeah. been really blessed to have the dad that I have. Cause I think he's a man's man. He's a Renaissance man and he's a man's man. He knows how to be right. And he knows very well how to be wrong as everyone is right. So the story is my brother, I was, my brother was 16. I was 14. My brother had a 73 Mustang uh, Mach 1, had the 351 Cleveland, and my brother was all into engines and everything. So he, he found these heads, these uh, racing heads, which is an engine part you put on your, your V8, right? And the guy that sold it to him was a loose friend of the family, said they're virgin heads. They've never been used. 200 bucks a piece they're yours and so my brother bought them for 200 bucks a piece we take these heads down to the shop to have them cleaned and the guy goes these are not virgin heads man these are bore out and everything mm. and so my dad said okay this guy he just jipped off my son yeah. so he and my older brother and myself we went to his house and my dad put the heads these big heavy like iron heads clunk, on his patio and said you owe my son 200 bucks and the guy said, no, I don't. And, he, and, and there was a scrum right then and there on the front steps where my dad had his finger and the guy's face going, I want the money and I want it now, blah, 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 blah. Well, it never came to blows. The point was made, we go home. That in itself is enough for me to go, yeah, that's my dad. But here's the kicker. The next day, he, because this guy was a loose friend of the family, it ate at his conscience a little, little bit because he almost kicked his ass at, on his front steps. So he went back to the guy's house with my older brother and me present and apologized, stuck his hand out, said it was out of line. I'm sorry about that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Never saw the guy again, but walking away, I thought, that's, that's how you do it. And yeah. I've always looked at that as like an example for me to live up to. Cause that's yeah. my dad, you know, that's a good example. Yeah. yeah. The, the defending your kids, but then taking it too far and being man enough to go back and face him with your kids in tow. With your kids. Yes. That's freaking huge. Yeah. That's well, he was making a point of, yeah. You know what? I did something that that I don't feel good about, and I want to show you how I how a man handles it. Exactly, that's right. what he did. It was a decision exactly right. that he made. Yep. Mm -hmm. I always respected him for that. Yeah, kind definitely. Cool. Yeah, that's I respect him for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this has been a really good good session. I like I like these stories. Yeah, agreed. All right, guys. Uh, final words before we close it out. 
I think I just want to repeat a phrase that I, I feel really proud of a minute ago is a uh, man's man brings everybody up, right? He, he, he like, he, he, everybody around him gets a level up as much as he can. That's, totally that's, agree. that's kind that's of the, the takeaway. Yeah. 100%. All right, guys. Well, then I'm going to close it out. <laughs> All right. That concludes this episode of Writing Guys. Um, if you have any questions that you would like us to answer about how men think, uh, visit writingguys.net and click the button to ask us a question. Uh, really short form will pop up. Just fill it out. You don't have to leave your name if you don't like to, if you don't want to, uh, and send it in and we'll get it on the show. And be sure to like, follow, or subscribe the Writing Guys podcast, wherever it is that you listen to your, your podcast. Uh, and tell your writer buddies about us, because we would love for people to get good takeaways for their books. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. All right. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye.